dog here? <laughs> yes. Fill my lungs with fresh morning diesel fumes. <laughs> Probably got enough lead in my blood to waterproof a cathedral. And what's this in aid of, then? Getting fit, getting sorted, a new leaf. Really? Does this mean you'll be doing a bit of work from now on, then? <laughs> Certainly. I'm going to stop seeing my shrink, I'm going to get fit, and I'm going to work. I know you're always anxious to get away, Ruth, but that's taking it a bit far, isn't it? Morning, Natalie. I understand you're taking a couple of days off. That's right. Well, that'll make a nice change, won't it? Doing nothing at home instead of doing nothing at the office. <laughs> Why exactly are you wearing that outfit? Someone running a Sebastian Co. look-alike contest, are they? He jogged. Oh, good idea. Nothing like a bit of exercise for helping you get a good day's sleep. Oh. Well, here's the day's, dare I say it, work. I'll see you later. The old man's on the prowl. I shouldn't let him see you like that. Good morning, sir. Oh, good morning, Ruth. <laughs> Got the old continental high roast on the go yet? I'll make some. Oh, it's my girl. Sit down, Ruth. You're taking a couple of days off, I see. That's right. Hmm, well, it would be nice for you to mooch about doing nothing at home for a bit instead of doing nothing at the office. <laughs> Why are you wearing a romper suit? <laughs> well, uh, or, or, or it is. This is an office, Ralph. I mean, I know you don't do any work, but I do think coming here in a play suit's going a bit far, don't you? <laughs> see, I, I'm wearing this because I jogged to work. I have got my suit here. Jogged? Yes. What for? Well, to get fit. Why on earth should you want to get fit? Fit for what? You don't do anything. <laughs> for heaven's sake. Oh, you don't need to embark on a course of physical training in order to sit in an office and doze all day. Is that a hood? Yes, I... I, I don't know why they always... What if someone from head office were here, Roth, and were to find this overgrown pixie working in one of my offices? <laughs> or not working in one of my offices? It's too bad. You going away? No, no, no. I just wanted to get a couple of things sorted out. Mm. You haven't forgotten that little chat we had the other day? Uh, no. The one in which I explained to you that in return for your salary, we'd like you to do a little bit of work now and then? <laughs> yes. Mm. Something that, a point you obviously haven't grasped. Well, when you've had your little break and the things are sorted out, and you're back in grown-up's clothes, <laughs> you should look for a great improvement then. Yes. Hmm. Ah, that smells good, Ruth. Delicious. I think Ruth's about ready for his Ruskin Oster milk. <laughs> What's wrong with him? Family trouble, I think. Look, are you really going to stop seeing your shrink? Certainly. Oh, your wife phoned just now. Ex-wife, Ruth. Ellen is my ex-wife. What does she want? No, uh, she wouldn't say. She's calling later. Hello? Hang on, it's the garage about your car. Ah, thanks. Hello. Yes, I did. I, I just wondered if the mechanic wanted his tobacco tin back or not. <laughs> he left it in my air cleaner. Is the engine stalled in the high street because the carburetor was clogged with Rizzlers? <laughs> well, no. In many ways, I was glad to find it there. I mean, it was proof you had at least opened the bonnet. Nothing else points that way. The engine oil's black, the battery's dry, and the plugs still have my initials on them. <laughs> also, can you tell me why I had to pay 80% more than the estimate? The estimate was just the labour charge. For God's sake, who have you got working on my car? Michael Parkinson? <laughs> well, I'll bring it in tomorrow, then. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Oh. This is a recording. We are all out doing nuclear holocaust drill. <laughs> oh, hello, Ellen. How are you? No, I'm fine. I'm, I, I thought of you last night. Yes, there was a spider in the bath. <laughs> but I got Mrs. Denzel in from next door. She's like you. She can pick them up. <laughs> no. 
course, that isn't all I miss about you. There's burnt toast and lumpy gravy and having to have the heating on in August. Oh, you're kidding. Well, you've only known him a couple of months. Well, three. No, no, I, I wouldn't want to go to your wedding. <laughs> the last time I went to a wedding with you, it ended in disaster. <laughs> Divorce is a disaster. I mean, I know in our case it was a great improvement, but... This is all very confusing, Ellen. Now that you're thinking of marrying someone else, it really isn't the time to start discovering your ex-husband's good points. Well, what's the matter? Oh, don't cry, Ellen. Please don't do that. It reminds me of our marriage. <laughs> All right, yes. Yes, of course, yes. Uh, well, about one. Yes, okay. I'll see you there. Okay, bye. Oh. What's the matter? That was my wife. Ex-wife. She's thinking of getting married again. Well, why did she ring you? I think she wants to give me as a reference. <laughs> she wanted to ask my advice about a relationship. I mean, what do I know about that? One divorce, terminal loneliness, and an unpaid analyst's bill. That's my life. All of a sudden, I'm Marjorie Proops. She's very upset. So she keeps remembering all the happy times we had together. I never knew we had happy times. <laughs> well, she told me while we were having them. <laughs> she wants to see me at lunch. Well, whatever it is she wants from me, I won't be able to give it, so I'm going to be feeling guilty for the next few weeks. Oh, God. Mm. I think I'd better go before I lose control of my animal urges. <laughs> Oh, Hello. No. What? Oh, yes. Um, I think Napoli brought it in. Hang on. Uh, yes, um, 78,000, excluding malicious damage and flood. Well, flood should be okay. It's practically on top of Ben Nevis. <laughs> As for malicious damage, I mean, how many mountaineering vandals are there? <laughs> yes, well, I mean, they'll just have to decide. Yes. Okay, fine. Oh. Um. Oh, um. Have you taken up naturism? <laughs> I was just changing. Into what? handsome prince, a normal human being. Um, you see... I don't want to discuss it. I think even an industrial tribunal would draw the line at nudity in the office. There's something I want to see you about, and if it's all the same with you, I'd rather conduct the interview with both of us reasonably attired. Don't think me old-fashioned, but I dislike consorting with naked members of my own sex. I shall be back shortly. What an absolutely smashing start to my new leaf. Not bad, actually. P pretty good, really. Um, mm. Taking a couple of days off work, holiday that was due. A few things I wanted to get sorted out. You jogged here, did you? Yes. I must get fit. Oh, <laughs> you're in good shape. Am I? I'm so lacking in energy these days. <laughs> Psychological, I suppose. This business is getting me down. The futility of it all. How do you mean? Oh, I don't know. Well, uh, never mind me. Now, <laughs> your depressions. Yes. How long exactly have you been having them? About 30 years. 
How old are you, exactly? 35. So the first five years were pretty happy then, were they? I wouldn't go that far. You weren't happy at school? Oh, miserable. Well, then were you happy to leave? You seem determined to thrust happiness upon me. No, I, I have the ability to be abjectly miserable anywhere. Mm. Uh, you were telling me about guilt, I remember. Yes. What was it about, exactly? Well, most things, really, but I think it came to a head when I lost the British Empire. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> How did this come about? But I was never clearly aware of the mechanics of it, but it was made abundantly clear to me that it was my fault. You see, there were three great periods in my history. There was the war. Well, now, that had been won for me. I mean, I'd had nothing to do with it myself. <laughs> then there was the unparalleled paradise that was before the war. Now, I don't know what you know about before the war, but I have it on good authority that it was quite something. <coughs> I mean... Quite apart from people behaving better and chicken having more flavour and <laughs> summers lasting longer, it, 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 it seems to have had a lot to do with being able to take the girlfriend out for a slap-up night out, no delight, unsampled, all for half a crown and still return home with fourpence halfpenny in <laughs> your pocket. <laughs> now, the age I lived in was nowadays. <laughs> As far as I can make out, nowadays is rather like to before the war what Stevenage is to Venice. <laughs> nowadays is the time when the British Empire was lost. The, the, the red bits drained steadily off the map. It was rather like watching the Atlas die of pernicious anemia. <laughs> and uh, you were made to feel responsible. Oh, yes, absolutely, yes. I was, I was left in no doubt about that. I was nowadays. I mean, when the history master fixed me with a flinty eye and said the Suez fiasco was Anthony Eden's fault, I knew he was just being kind to me. <laughs> Eden was a scapegoat. I was the real malefactor. Yes. I, I do recognise a lot of this, yes. Before the war. Hmm. The films were good, weren't they? They don't make them anymore. Yes. Yes, you're quite right. Yes, I remember that guilt. Now you mention it, yes. Oh, God. Are you all right? Well, I... I have been getting these terrible depressions. Really? What's, what's, what's brought them on? Well, it's bound to get you, isn't it? All I do all day is sit here listening to people's problems. I, I share their suffering day in, day out, endlessly. Of course I get upset. Yes. I sometimes wonder if people realise just how hard life can get. Oh, I'm sure. It's, I, uh... it's no picnic for some people, you know. No, no. Oh, God. I... Can I get you anything? I, I feel so futile. Oh, no. And my own life. I, mean, I have a life, a career. Is it progressing? I had a film star who was a client once, but he never came back after he played that autistic psychopath and won that Oscar. <laughs> I, I can't get past chapter three of my book. Oh, what's that about? Mastering self-discipline. <laughs> how much do I achieve in my work? I mean, for instance, I have a... a I have a client at the moment, a really nice man. I mean, he does half the hoovering, tells his kids dirty stories, you know, go, goes on sponsored walks for Friends of the Earth, you know the type. Yes. Well, he had a terrible childhood, and I'm helping him with his emotional problems, and it's just at a critical stage when his wife walks out on him without any notice at all. Dear me. She runs off with an air hostess. <laughs> no. No, no, wait a minute. I, I, think, I think perhaps she dies. They all get a bit jumbled up. Of course, yes. I... Anyway, he's left in the lurch with the adopted Vietnamese twins and the top-up mortgage. <laughs> this, this isn't you, is it? <laughs> Only partly. Uh, I, I'm seeing a lot of people at the moment. <clears throat> it's a recession. Uh, and my special summer discount. Have you had a note of me? 
I, I, I saw the receptionist. Oh, yes. uh, actually, this session is on the house. Most kind. Oh, well, one does what one can. Oh, that's right. Uh, your wife left you, didn't she, for an Italian sculptor? Well, a sign writer from Deptford, actually. But... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Where was I? The Vietnamese, the mortgage, and the sponsored walks. Well, what can I do? I, I, nothing. I, I have no magic wand, no miracle drug. And I, I say this to my clients. There is nothing I can do at all. Hmm. <laughs> well, is it enough? <laughs> I, I, I'm bound to ask this of myself. Am I adequate? <laughs> When are you due to come and see me again? Ah, uh, well, actually, um, about these sessions... Well, well, come and see me Thursday. Uh, um, I'm, I'm working there, and... Well, well come fact... after work, six-ish, yes. Well, come and see me then. Uh, yes, I well, look I... forward to our little chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well... Actually... Oh, there's no trouble at all, really. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> now, I'm sure it was Anthony Eden's fault, you know. Serious. <laughs> hello, Ruth. Oh, hello. There's a famine in Somalia, you know. So I gather. And look at this, it's positively obscene. <laughs> What's gone wrong with the world, Ruth? Afraid I don't know offhand. <laughs> I remember just after the war. I was a young man then, just starting out. Head full of hair, heart full of hope. My word, Michael Foote was walking around looking as if he'd just seen something absolutely terrifying even then. <laughs> I remember... I say I'm not interrupting you working, am I? No, 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 of course not. You don't do anything. Well, actually, I, I had Oh, just... it's all right, it's all right. Every firm has a passenger or two. I just count myself lucky I know where you are. <laughs> I mean, you do seem to be travelling in a sleeping compartment. But there it is. <laughs> where was I? About V-Day, I think. Oh, yes. You see, we'd all done something together, taken a bit of a battering. I was in the army, you know. Good Lord. Oh, just after, I mean. <laughs> National service. You do that? No, 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 I, I missed it by a bit. Bugger me, Roth, your timing's a gem. <laughs> if they ever bring it back, you'll be too old. <laughs> I still got my uniform in the dead end of the wardrobe next to my dinner jacket and that lime green safari suit I bought in Harrods Sale. <laughs> lime green? Oh, well, it was very cheap. Aye. Which is just as well, because I never wear it. <laughs> you see, we all thought after what we'd been through that we were going to start anew, to build something up. Have you ever stopped to have a hard look at what we built up here? You know one thing I always said, you can tell a lot about a nation from the quality of its graffiti. True. <laughs> Well, I was in that gents in Bull Street the other day. I was there so long, people must have thought I'd got a dicky prostate. But I... I simply couldn't read it. Yeah. It wasn't intelligible. When you've produced a generation that can't spell four-letter words, I reckon you're in trouble. Well, what's brought all this on, you're asking? Well, my daughter, Miranda. You met Miranda? No, no. My wife chose the name. She's in the club. Miranda. Ah. Mm. Pitiful, isn't it? Contraceptive pills practically handed out with the school milk. Battalions of trendies and social workers dishing out family planning leaflets. Sex education films in the kindergarten. God almighty. The only film we had was Buster Keaton at Christmas. Sex education was something Shiner Edwards told you in the playground. I don't know. But the crux of the whole thing is the father. He's not suitable. He's not human. <laughs> he stayed the other night. He was over an hour in the bathroom because he has to shave his head. <laughs> Except for the bit down the middle. 
the blue bit. He wears these great boots and, uh, and a waistcoat. Uh, well, uh, waistcoats are quite smart, aren't they? Yes, but he doesn't wear anything else. These great arms stick out, nude, grimy and tattooed. He's all sweaty, chest and hairy armpits. Last night we had Gordon Benskin and his wife round to dinner, manager of that mock Tudor bank by the Jubilee clock. And this Mohican walks in. I tell you, I've seen nothing like him outside the pages of the National Geographic. What does he do for a living? Oh, well, he's a mugger, I suppose. I don't know. Anyway, that's why I was so ratty with you the other day. I've got Chingach Gook at home, and I come into the office and find you got up as Bilbo Baggins. I just don't know what's going on in the world today. Everything's decaying. There's no aspiration. <laughs> it's not like before the war. What? I said... What do you know about before the war? When were you born? 1945. Oh, of course, I should have known it. Trust you, leave us to get everything sorted out for you before you make your entrance. Then you drop out and drop into the waiting arms of the welfare state, typical. There was a depression before the war. People were hungry. Kids in leg irons. It was a perfectly bloody time. For God's sake, we had to listen to Gracie Fields. <laughs> I'm down, Ralph. I'll admit it. I feel low. Look at me. I'm in dreadful shape. Oh, God, Miranda, what have you done? He's not going to marry her, this chap. Yes, that's the whole trouble. He is going to marry her. I'm going to have Chingach Gook for a son-in-law. Oh, God. I mean, you know, I take a few Valium now. I... I, I go to Dr. Franklin's group therapy. You see, I, I know the dangers. I'm holding it in check. Very good. Yes. The important thing is that I realize it's something I've got to do. Yes. I, what can they do? Nothing. No. no. I, I've got to accept it, learn to live with it. It is a hard life in, in many ways. Yes. <laughs> hard life. What happened to that chap with all the problems? What chap? <laughs> the Vietnamese and the sponsored war. Oh, oh, him. Yes. Oh, he's on the bottle now. Oh. Yes. Yes, I think he feels a lot better. <laughs> oh, God. home are you it's only lunchtime no no i'm just going around the park a couple of times oh. how are things these days since you turned over your new leaf oh just terrific my wife's in tears about her love life my car's got a smoking related disease <laughs> my analyst's got a nervous breakdown the old man's having a menopausal crisis <laughs> and mrs denzel's gone on holiday who's she next door neighbor and there's a massive spider in the bar <laughs> Are you sure you're not overdoing this, jogging at lunchtime? Ah, uh, well, this one is rather in the line of duty. What? Rolf! Don't let him see you! You ready? Yeah, yeah. 